Hello, I'm Tim, and this is another Real Ideal Gear Review. Today we're going to be looking at the professional series of watches for medical professionals, in particular nurses, doctors, EMTs. This is the very entry-level watches for those of you that are just getting into the field. For those of you that are just exploring the idea of wearing a watch while on duty, while on uh, your shift. I say duty because I was a former cop for a while, uh, five years as a reserve deputy. And uh, so I have some familiarity with first responders, the needs of first responders. You know, as a cop, you don't really do a lot of, um, you know, pulse, taking someone's pulse over the long term. You check a pulse to see if there is one, but we're not timing the pulse rate um, and those kind of things. So this is something that uh, I think uh, all medical professionals are looking for. Just some ideas, some questions that you might have, and some possibilities. This video is not so much about the watches as they are about the ideas behind the watches that were chosen and some of the, the features that you get. We're going to focus in today on the analog watches. We do have one digital watch just to give you a comparison. We're not going to get into it all the uh, smart watches. So if, you have, if you're looking for a smart watch, this video is not going to cover that subject. But we will cover just briefly on the digital watch. It's it's a fantastic step up for a lot of reasons. There's also some, you know, a couple of, of things that kind of detract from a digital watch. So let's get started. So what we're going to have here is just kind of an overview of everything that, that I've found that would be helpful for the medical professional out there. And a few things is just the watch face itself or the dial. So when you're looking at a watch and you're looking at the kind of dial that you have uh, for your watch, you want it to be very clear. You want it to have high contrast. You want to have the hour hand and the minute hand be very clear and distinct from the dial. So dials that are light colored like this one is, um, preferably not have a uh, light colored hands. Preferably have a red second hand. Um, anything that provides contrast is something that would be of a higher value for you when it comes down to just quick checking the time and, and or doing a pulse rate, especially in low light conditions. When you consider the, the location of where a lot of this work happens inside of a hospital or a clinic, you have uh, you know light conditions that are certainly the lights are on during the nighttime, but if you're uh, doing the night shift, you don't leave the lights on for the patient's sake in their room. So the lights are off and in some low light conditions. So consider that as well. Also, reading glasses. If you're like me and you have, or you're my vintage, I like to say, and you have reading glasses, consider looking at the watch without glasses to start with just to see if there is any benefit to the design of the watch that would uh, not require you to have reading glasses on for the basic time function. When it comes down to the pulse rate, doing some sp real specific timing with the second hand, you're probably going to have to wear your glasses anyway. But at the same time, there should still be some features about the watch face or the hands that provides you with a better view of the watch and uh, the time that is elapsing. So and a couple other things too is just the date. Um, you know, if you want to have the date on there, the uh, day of the week, those can be helpful. Um, it just kind of sets the the uh, the day of the week and the, the date in your mind, especially when you start your shift, um, just to make sure that uh, you get the right stuff recorded on the on the documents. High contrast is one thing. I, I think what it helps additionally is loom, light, loom, anything that helps to illuminate the dial. So several of these watches have uh, loom to them. And you'll see this one in particular, this is the uh, infantry model, full loom dial. So when this dial is charged up, whether it be just daylight conditions, whether it be you know high intensity light, or if you have one of those um, pupil checking uh, flashlights, flash it over the dial before you go into a patient's room. And a lot of times these full loom dials will stay illuminated for hours, if not your entire shift. Other watches will have a feature where you can press the button uh, it's a quartz with uh, kind of like a uh, an illuminated dial. Uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. Timex is really great with that. They have the Indiglo series, and that one you just press the 
the crown on the side and you get the Indiglo. Also, if you have a digital watch, and this is a real basic G-Shock. This is the uh, model number 5610U, but it also has a light as well, has an automatic light. So again, when you get into the digital watch realm, you start to, to jump up in features and the number of things that the watch can actually do. The downside is, is that sometimes the numbers for guys like me with glasses are a little bit harder to read just the time, not necessarily the seconds, but just the time. It's a little harder to read the, the digital readout than it is to see the hands on a watch face or on analog watch. So some things to keep in mind as far as the overall uh, spectrum of things that we're going to talk about with each of the watches. Also, maintenance is another piece. How easily uh, maintainable is the watch? So in the medical field, you're going to want to have something that has you know a silicone strap so that the, it's very flexible. It's um, easy to wear. It's lightweight. At the same time, it's easy to clean. You want to have a, a watch that has very little when it comes to things that it catches on. You know, bumping into things, catching on things, wires, that those kind of stuff. Um, but also just catching, you know, fluids, non-fluids, that kind of stuff. The cleanability of it is also something to keep in mind. Water resistance is another factor that we're going to look at. All of these watches have a water resistance rating. And most of them are minimal. You're not going to find anything that has, you know, 100 meters of water resistance, which is kind of your swimming standard. Once you get to 100 meters, it's more of a more or less a swimming style watch, something that can be submerged for a while. Um, at the same time, in the medical, you know, in the job medical field, you're not submerging your watch for long periods of time, so it may not be as necessary. Um, different kinds of straps. There's a NATO strap. NATO straps are the ones that that go through the spring bar and the lugs that maintain the watch on your wrist. Even if one of the spring bars comes loose, it stays on your wrist, which is a really nice feature. Um, straps, different sizes, different thicknesses. Um, I actually have three different brands of watches, all with silicone straps. And they're, they look like the, it's the same watch, just a different company brand on them. But the straps themselves are very different. So keeping that in mind as far as flexibility, how stiff they are, the number of adjustment holes on the strap, the length of the strap. If you're a bigger person, big wrists, you, know, you don't want to have a longer strap on there um, to make those adjustments. Metal bracelets are probably not the thing to go with. Um, I did not include any in my review of, of these watches, of the seven I have here. Um, just because of the, the cleanliness of the watch and then just, you know, the, you know, getting things snagged on it, hooked on it, those kind of things. I think the silicone strap or a cloth strap, even a leather strap has a little more forgiving uh, feature to it. So the strap is another piece to this. The size of the dial is also important. You want to have a dial that has, you know, a large enough size to it where you can see it from a distance. And so you'll see that watches with a smaller dial and a larger dial make a difference all right so smaller dial compresses everything smaller numbers smaller hands everything gets smaller larger dial easier to read also more precise because the second hand moves over a greater distance um, you can see the difference between one second to the other and again if you have the reading glasses like i do sometimes the bigger dial is the way to go okay other features that you may find on some of these watches, and I'll, let, I'll end with this, is that some watches are actually designed for the medical professional. In this case, you have a pulse rate range or marker on the watch for in 15 second intervals, if that's helpful for you. This is one of the more popular watches for nurses on the market today. It's also not real expensive. Um, these are all quartz watches. And so they, as far as, um, accuracy goes from month to month they're going to be very accurate watches um, this one is a solar watch quartz solar so you really don't need to buy a battery seemingly for a long 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 time these weather watches maybe you know every every three maybe four years um, and if, if you have a watch that has a light fu function on it, it may be sooner than that. So those are some of the overall features that I looked at as far as um, what to look for and, uh, and just to kind of give you a starting point. One more comment on smartwatches versus these watches here, whether they're quartz or mechanical. I don't have any mechanical watches out here right now. Um, but you, you have to charge them up daily. Not a big deal. Everybody's used to charging their phone up. What's the what's the big deal of charging your watch up? Well, it's one more thing. It's one more thing if you forget, you know, you're, you're down for the night. 
when it comes down to it. So something that is really low maintenance, low thought when it comes to putting the watch on and going to work. And that's where even the, the solar powered quartz watches have a huge advantage. You almost never have to worry about the power of the watch. Uh, most of those solar quartz watches will last even in total darkness for six months, sometimes over six months without seeing any light whatsoever. And they almost always charge under incandescent light, fluorescent lights, sunlight, all those different uh, formats of light. So hang on, we're going to get into this. We're going to go through, through watch by watch, and we'll go through and, and see what the features are. Some of them are better than others, and you're going to see some of the differences that when it comes down to an analog watch that will probably help you make a decision as far as um, what style of analog watch that you might be interested in. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to go through these watches pretty much one at a time. There's three of them that are very, very similar to each other, so we'll fly through those a little bit faster than the others. But let's get started with the first one, the most common one as far as brand goes, and that is the Timex. This is the Timex Easy Reader, and the Easy Reader has uh, one of the smaller dials of the six analog watches that I have. It's uh, that one in the Sokio, uh, or the Soko, Sochiko, I'm not sure how you say that. Anyway, they have the smaller of the watch dials. Um, it may be something that you're, you're, you're interested in. As far as the height on the wrist, this watch, all of them with the exception of two, do a really good job of staying low on the wrist so it doesn't snag on stuff. Um, it's just, and it's, it's easy, especially if you have long sleeves for the sleeves to go over the top and that. So, but anyway, the Timex is great, has a great contrasting dial, black numbers, really bright dial, white dial has a day date. Um, the hands are solid black, which really adds to the contrast and the readability of the watch. The second hand is a red hand. All of the analog watches was one of the standards I had was it had to have a red second hand. So it stands out because the timing feature that you really need focuses more on the second hand. Although obviously you can time for, you know, doing your rounds and stuff like that with the hour hand or the minute hand. So Anyway, that is something that uh, the Timex does really well. The light or the illumination is really good because it has the Indiglo. However, it's only on when you're pressing the crown in on the watch. So as soon as you let go of the crown, the, the light turns off, which means you have to have a hand free to turn the light on. Um, that may or may not be what you want, and that may or may not be something that works for you in your situation, or in some other situations, it doesn't really matter. I'm just checking the time. You know, I don't need the, the light to stay on for a length of time. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind when you're looking at illumination, uh, that especially if it has a light on it. Uh, how do you turn the light on? How long does it stay on? The strap itself is leather, and leather is not conducive for those biohazard situations. But, you know, if you're on the floor doing rounds and stuff occasionally, um, and you're doing more paperwork, office type work, um, it might work better for you that way. That way you get some of the features of an analog watch that you can use for some of the duties that are more intensive on uh, with the patients themselves. Um, but it's, it's a really nice looking watch. It doesn't have the 24 hour markings under the 12 hour markings. It does not have the second markings on it. All the other analog watches have those markings on there. So Kind of a ding on that as well. Quartz watch, low maintenance, high accuracy, 15 seconds, plus or minus 15 seconds a month. Typical mechanical watch is plus or minus 15 seconds a day. So quartz watches have a huge advantage on accuracy. The next one is the Sokio or the Soko, so Sokiko. I don't know how you pronounce it. And uh, it's a sports watch. The, the sports watch, it has a plastic case on it, which, eh, you know, it's, it's cheap in that sense. But at the same time, it does what it needs to do. It's a taller watch. It sits a little bit taller on the wrist. Um, this one and the G-Shock both have a height to them that um, it's just kind of the design itself. Uh, overall legibility, the dial looks great. Um, it has a push-button light, much like the Timex. It has a Indiglo type uh, dial illumination to it. It's you know, it's a light that you turn on. The difference is between this one and the Timex. This one, the light stays on for three seconds. So that's really helpful. We also, when you look at the watch face, the hour hand and the minute hand um, have loom on them. They're not solid black like the Timex, which really does kind of help 
them stand out, even though they have you know a white core to them, so to speak. The second hand is outstanding. This is the best best second hand of all of them. It has what's called a lollipop, which is a round disc at the end of the second hand that really catches your attention, so it's easy to see where the second hand is on your watch. It has the 24-hour markings, the second 60-second uh, markings all the way around the watch. No date function on here, um, as far as the you know telling the date. Uh, you know, some people don't want it on there. It takes up space, and I scratch my head like, what space are we referring to here? But they—that's one of the things that they just don't like. The strap is plastic. Um, it's a rubber. I shouldn't say it's plastic. It's, it's kind of a rubber. It's a flexible strap. It does a very good job of being comfortable. The holes on it are large, which means you're going to get a little bit of play with the uh, the buckle, the uh, the pin and buckle, because there's just some room for it to wiggle around. So you'll get a little bit of play that way. Some people like that because it adds a little flexibility to the watch. Other people, they don't like their watch moving around that much on their wrists. So that'll be up to you. Um, the water resistance on this one is 50 meters. You can shower with it for sure. Um, swimming and bathing, you know, probably not for long periods of time. Um, but overall, this watch has a lot of good features to it that really help uh, make up for a smaller dial. The next three, are, and they're all very similar to each other, is the Speedle, the Blecken, and the Golden Hour. If you, when you put them side by side, and I'll show the pictures up on the screen here, but when you put them up next to each other, they look like they were made in the same factory and they just put a different dial on it. And I wouldn't doubt it if that was the case. So we'll go through all these. Legibility in all of them looks really good. High contrast, black numbers on a white dial. You've got the 24-hour markings on there. You've got the 60-second markings on there. The Speedle has the 15-second intervals for pulse rate, uh, keeping track of your pulse, or your pulse, and also the pay pulse of your patients. Um, the Speedle also has the day-date function on there, which is nice. The Blecken and the Golden Hour have full loom dials, which is really helpful. And I'll talk about that right now. The full loom dial is great because once it's illuminated or charged, that dial will stay illuminated for a length of time, which is really helpful because if, let's say, you're going into to do rounds and you're doing a bunch of pulse readings, um, you know, you illuminate your dial with whatever the light source happens to be. Just hold up to a bright light for 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Um, you don't have to press any buttons. It's illuminated the entire time. So you're going to see the hour hand, the minute hand, and even the second hand, especially when you've initially illuminated the dial. Now the Blecken has a much better uh, full loom full loom dial than the Golden Hour. The Golden Hour starts to fade almost immediately, and you see it um, when it happens. When you when you charge it, you'll start to see it start to fade right away. However, they have this you know they they fade off the brightest level, but they glow for quite a while. I would say you know the Golden Hour probably you're going to get 10 minutes out of it. Um, the black and you probably get a half an hour out of it. It's, it was significantly brighter than the golden hour. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind. The Speedle, it does not have a full loom dial. It has illuminated hands on the hour hand and the minute hand, which is a little bit of a head scratcher because I'm not sure as far as nighttime use, why you wouldn't have the full loom dial when the second hand is probably as important or more important than the hour hand and the minute hand. So that's the way it is. Um, I don't like the, the way the Speedle is set up. I would give the advantage to the Blecken as far as illumination goes. Legibility, they're all very legible. One thing about the Blecken that's actually a ding on it, it has the best full loom dial, but the ding on it is that the hands themselves are light colored. You have illumination or paint on the, the hands, the hour hand, the minute hand, but then the hand itself is silver. So it starts to blend in with the white dial as a backdrop. So Anything that has a white backdrop, you want to have a black or a high contrast outline or, like the Timex, solid black hands. The Blecken doesn't do that, so, you know, for me with, again, reader glasses, uh, older eyes, it can start to blend in. And it's not a real quick glance look to see what the time is. Um, it may not be quite as easy that way. So while it has the advantage in full loom, it has a disadvantage in the color of the hands themselves. Um, moving on to... The infantry. The infantry is one that was a surprise to me. And it was a surprise partly because, you know, I, I picked this watch because it had all the same features as the other watch. It had the red second hand. It had high contrast dial. This one had a full loom dial. Um, it had a darker case to it. 
it had the adjustable NATO strap. A NATO strap is a strap that if one of the spring bars on either the either end of the case were to break, the watch would still be on your wrist because of the way that it, the strap goes underneath the case and doubles up. The downside is for the size of this, it's the perfect dial size, but the height on the wrist is high because you have a double layer of the watch strap underneath the case of the watch. So it raises it up off your wrist. How much? I don't really notice it that much. Um, I don't mind larger watches. But as the profile of the watch is higher and higher on your wrist, uh, just keep in mind that it snags on things. If you're doing a lot of work, let's say you're in a, a setting where you have less than cooperative patients, um, it could be something that you really have to keep an eye on as far as like where your watch is or maybe taking the watch off when you go into work with a particular patient um, because of the physical nature that you might have to be uh, engaged in. So... That's one ding as far as the size of the watch is the way that the strap goes underneath the case. But you can swap the strap out very, very easily and put a different strap on. You can, matter of fact, you can put on the silicone strap that you have on the other watches that uh, has more of a, you know, med floor type look to it. So it's totally up to you. Um, I kind of like the NATO strap. The NATO strap on this one is actually really long. So this, I'm assuming, is for a larger style wrist. The loom on this one. This is one of the best looms of all. Uh, this is a full loom dial, and this loom uh, rivals some of the micro brand full loom dials that I have in my watch collection. And this is something that I'm going to look at as like, wow, this is a keeper. It has solid black hands. It has a full loom dial that is really bright, and it stays illuminated and relatively bright for a long time. Really like it. And the second hand, you can easily see the second hand moving around on that full loom dial. So. As far as not having to press a button, this is one of those that you don't have to press a button. It stays illuminated for a long time. I really like this one. I think this is one of the better ones of the bunch when it comes down to someone who works the night shift a lot, um, does a lot of nighttime work, not a lot of nighttime timing work with the watch. Um, the water resistance on this one is 50 meters. And I didn't mention it on the other ones. The Speedle is 50. The Blecken and the Golden Hour are both 30. So this one's 50 on the infantry, 50 meters, which means, yeah, shower, maybe brief swimming, um, brief submersion. I say brief like minutes, you know. Um, I wouldn't go, you know, scuba diving with this watch. This is definitely not it. 100 meters is would be the absolute minimum for any extended time underwater, submersion underwater. So this one, yeah, you could probably do it, but I just wouldn't do it for a long period of time. Uh, has the 24-hour markers, has the 60-second markers. The just the the usability of this watch is really high. Um, size overall really good. So last is going to be the where'd it go? There it is, the G Shock. And so this G Shock is the 5610U, often referred to as the Square. Uh, it's been around for decades and uh, it's been upgraded as far as the uh, module on the inside. But this one has all the tools, stopwatch, countdown timer, a countdown timer that you can actually uh, set the seconds. So let's just say you want to do 15 second intervals because of, again, pulse rate monitoring. You can set it at 15 seconds. And when you go in and you start, you hit start, you start counting the pulse, and all you have to do is listen for the beep. You don't even need a light. Okay, and then the beep tells you that, hey, your 15 seconds are up. How many pulse, uh, how many beats did you get? And do your calculation. So you can set the countdown timer down to the seconds. Um, has the day date it has a 24-hour readout so this one is set to right now it's 24-hour readout because of just I've gotten used to that and I just like it that way so it's 150 so right now it says 1350 all right so it's for reporting purposes you get all that information on the watch face it can be for those of you with reading glasses it can be a little bit of a challenge to read without reading glasses the, the digital readout is not that big and that's one of the things I've looked at with digital watches that I consider buying is how big are the numbers for the minutes, hour, and seconds so I don't have to use my reading glasses, okay? Now, I can do that with this one, but it's just something to keep in mind. It is on the smaller side. More than likely, you'll you'll be all right. The light on this one, if you turn the light on, it goes on for three seconds, and then it goes off. It also has an auto light feature, which means when you turn your wrist, the light will go on. It'll go on for three seconds and then turn off. So there's a lot of good features. It has the atomic clock time setting, so it's always accurate. The date is always accurate. You can have the daylight, sand, daylight savings time on there as well, or standard time. You can set that as well as an automatic feature. So a lot of good features. And this is why digital watches are just in a different category than analog watches. 
it's quartz it's a solar watch you don't have to worry about charging it or changing the battery on that watch on the rest of these you know you have to consider that but remember that's like every three or four years so you're not talking about like you know every six months you got to change the battery out um so overall this one has the the, the lowest score we're going to play it like golf um, because of all the features, the auto light, the water resistance, the solar power, the atomic clock uh, accuracy setting. It's awesome. It's $111. Um, it's a great value for a digital watch. Well, there you have it. That is the overall review of all seven of those watches. So which watches made the top of the list? First and foremost, probably the most obvious, is the G-Shock 5610U uh, uh, square watch. It's a digital watch. It has all kinds of features built into it. Countdown timer, stopwatch, automatic light, at atomic timekeeping. It has this tough solar, so it's always charging. So many features that come in with a watch like this. It's really not a fair comparison with the other ones, but I wanted you to see what this looked like. As far as the analog watches go, the Speedle came up there as in the top three um, it has some great features to it the cost sixty dollars is a little bit high compared to the other ones that were in the, the other top two um, so this is a definitely a, a watch that gets a lot of attention online and is something to uh, give it a fair shot when it comes down to considering it for a medical watch the Sokio was a surprise it's twenty bucks it has the automatic light, not automatic light, it has the light that stays on for three seconds. It has all the markings on the dial. It has an outstanding second hand with the lollipop, the little disc on the end of the second hand. It has a high contrast dial. There's so many good things about this watch. The water resistance is 50 meters. It's a good sports watch. I highly recommend this watch as a number two. And the best of the bunch when it comes to the analog watches was the infantry. The infantry has all the high contrast, blacked out hands for the hour hand and the minute hand. The second hand has a little added uh, color to it, a little, a little triangle towards the end or an arrow at the end of the second hand to help it stand out. The loom is what really stands out about this one. So the low light nighttime timekeeping is not a problem at all. And as a, as a matter of fact, it stays lit and illuminated for hours. I would, I would venture to say that it stays well lit uh, from the time that you charge it up. And I'll even charge it up with one of these lights real quick. And you can see what I'm talking about. It's already glowing. It's a Loom Monster. So this is on par with some of my micro brand, micro brand watches that cost five, six, seven times as much. This watch cost, what was it, uh, $26. $26 bucks for a watch like this. Now the strap is a little bit long. Probably have to change out the strap on this one. But this is something that as far as the value goes, this is right up there. So if this is something that you're interested in, as far as more videos like this, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like or want to share this with anybody, please do that. This is something that I do want to do more of, the kind of professional evaluation, the practical evaluation, not just on the specifications of the watch, but how those watches apply to certain jobs that are out there. I also want to give a shout out to the the knife that I'm wearing today. It's actually a neck knife. I've gotten used to neck knives. This is a knife from Montana Americana. I live in Montana and so this is a company that, that's out here in Montana. They do a great job. Really enjoy the knife. It does a lot of good things and having it around the neck is surprisingly convenient. More so than I ever thought it would be. So again my name is Tim. This is a Real Ideal Gear Review and we'll see you next time. These watches are for sale, and you can look at the description down below for the cost. The cost does include shipping. If you're interested in them, I will uh, get you the information. I will send them out to you, and I'm trusting that you'll send the payment after you've had a chance to inspect them. None of these watches have been worn. As a matter of fact, most of them still have the stickers on the crystal and on the case back on the backside. Good luck, and we'll see you next time.